Hey, welcome to our weekly live. I think we are officially live. I'm looking around here, trying to make sure. Uh, come on in, come on in. I have some uh, great training for you guys today. Some great questions that have come in from uh, uh, different participants here. And uh, you'll be happy to know that I have answers. <laughs> So anyways, uh, just come on in, hashtag live if you're coming in live, and then hashtag replay if uh, you are listening to the replay. Uh, this helps me to uh, understand, first of all, the algorithms of Facebook, and then also make sure I'm reaching out to you guys so that you guys get the best uh, information here. Um, and because there's so many different things that I can cover and do cover, uh, but the bottom line, bottom line is that you are building assets and uh, creating the retirement program that you want. Um, so that is our bottom line here in this group. Uh, those of you that don't know me, my name is Joanna Wright, founder of Bottom Line Wealth, because uh, I always say what the bottom line is, right? And uh, I geek out on um, wealth strategies through real estate, real estate, real estate. Did I say that? <laughs> Anyways, um, so taxes is in my background. I've been in real estate for over 20 years, and I do a lot of creative uh, real estate investing so that you can keep more of the money you make, right? I hope you guys can see me okay. I don't know if I'm looking in the camera. Uh, but I got asked um, the other day, I got asked, uh, you know, if you have money, how come you're not using that to purchase real estate? And to that, I have this whole big training that I'm going to do. Uh, and Why? Um, I use private money lenders, hard money lenders, um, creative financing like seller uh, financing subject to. Uh, I'll go over some of those. There's quite a few uh, seller financing deals I've done. It's the kind of norm in the industry uh, once you learn that strategy and can explain it to a seller. Uh, it's pretty normal. Um, what gets people stuck is the subject to and uh, I'm going to go over all of those. So again, if you're coming in live, hashtag live, coming in uh, replay, hashtag replay, just say hello. I'd love to say hello to you, right? Uh, let me know where you're coming in from. I'm in Pennsylvania now. Uh, I was in California. Uh, I've invested in multiple states across the nation. I have students across the nation. So I'm always diving into uh, different states and what they're doing because uh, you learn something new every time. And um, learning now, I have students in Oklahoma that uh, wholesaling has become illegal. Like, it sounds so terrifying, right? Um, so if you just do a wholesale, they're not gonna, you know, penalize you or anything like that. It's when you make it a business that they want you to be an actual realtor. So uh, I'm learning all of these different things. Uh, again, been in this business for over 20 years and there's always something new happening. So I like to keep guys up to date. Uh, Illinois started this and um, uh, I know other states, as soon as that happened, other states would follow. I thought California would be the next one because, you know, they're always the first to do everything and so strict on things uh, that um, that I thought they would be next. But it's Oklahoma was next, and uh, who knows who's next. But um, if you guys know, if your state that you're in is looking to make wholesale illegal, type it in the comments. Let me know so we can keep up to date, Okay. Again, students in Texas, in uh, uh, Seattle, uh, California, uh, New Mexico, uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, Colorado. I'm like, I am throughout the state. So uh, the more I learn, the more I can serve my students. And it's just a matter of uh, finding a couple things to understand. But today I wanted to go over uh, money, 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 money. And I'm doing this because um, uh, I talk about uh, creative financing uh, quite a bit. And uh, to me, that's just the secret sauce of building wealth. Uh, but it is about um, why, the why I do it, right? And I do it because it, it offers strategy. Like I'm all about, uh, you know, I was just reminded, I was on a, a call on Tuesday, a uh, gal we started, she had not had um, any properties when we first met, has now got 22 properties. So she's thought, I just love the way you like mix it up, shook it up and poof. And 
made all these different things happen. Uh, that was her big takeaway from the things that I've taught her because I, I can combine strategies and I'm a mad scientist when it comes to that. So uh, I make it work, right? <laughs> anyway, so um, I wanted to share this with you guys. Um, I was going over the different ways that I talk about money and why. Um, the fastest way that you can get to building wealth and the reason you want to, right? Um, first of all, it's tax purposes is why you want to. And then doing this is usually uh, doing se seller finance or subject to, okay? So this is gold, you guys, that I'm putting down here. So go ahead and get some uh, notes out if you need to, uh, pen and paper so you take some notes. This is what I teach my private clients um, to learn so that they can convert something into a more uh, creative offer. I have a, a client that had uh, turned a wholesale into a subject to into a joint venture and a flip, joint venture into a flip. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can work this. So don't think you need to know it all or you need to have it all, like money, to do it all, right? You can. There's all kinds of ways to do this. So let's break this down, some best practices and how this works. Um, and I'm here every week, every Wednesday, giving these uh, tips, um, best practices for, um, you know, doing different strategies in real estate investing. So uh, be sure to put it on your calendar, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so the first way is seller financing, and, and this is typical in the industry, and it's widely known. Um, there's a lot of sellers that don't really know, but mostly investors understand what seller financing is. Uh, but you need equity in order to execute this one, okay? And then uh, subject two is um, taking a loan over subject to the existing, you're taking over a house, taking over a house subject to the existing loan. I can get it out. Uh, anyway, so, um, so the loan stays in place and you go on title, right? And then you're paying the uh, loan off for the seller who now leaves the property. Um, and that's a whole, you know, training in itself, subject to. But I'm just going to give you the highlights of what it is so you know what I'm talking about. But those are the two main ways uh, to do creative real estate investing. Um, and so you might ask, well, I want the deal and the seller doesn't understand seller financing, so now I have to find cash. That is not the case. You shouldn't have to do that. Um, I wouldn't do that. Um, I would help them understand basically how it works um, first before I did anything else. And a lot of times it's not a good deal uh, otherwise. So it becomes a great deal when I could do something creative, right? And it might be on the border of a decent deal if I can't do something creative. So I might not close the deal. It's no longer a deal, right? Uh, so just so you guys know, seller financing, you have to have equity, subject to, uh, it's typically someone who doesn't have equity uh, and maybe they're facing foreclosure, um, maybe they're having some sort of hardship, okay, uh, in ways to do this. And I'll go over that in a second here. But um, there's some, the, those are the two best ways to, do, to acquire real estate. Now, I always speak about exit strategies, wholesale, fix and flip, buy and hold and money lend. Um, and you can do all of this. That's an exit strategy. These are acquisition ways, right? Seller financing and uh, subject to. This is an acquisition. Uh, this is the two best ways to acquire real estate that you don't have to apply for a loan. You don't need perfect credit or any credit, really. You don't qualify with the bank, so you don't need any bank statements. You don't have to show any funds or six month seasoning or debt to income ratio, any of those things that have disqualified you in the past. Uh, from getting more than a few properties. So it doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you don't have, these are still best practices, okay? Um, so none of your own money is leveraged in three different ways. This is how you can execute it. You could, uh, as a long-term buy and hold, you have a tenant in there, right? Um, you can wholesale it, you can flip it if you want, um, but let's dive into the first one. So you can do long-term, which is buy and hold. So buy and hold, fix and flip, 
uh, or wholesale, right? So you're going to, or and you could even be a money lender on it. So we've done that as well. Um, let me tell you that story as to why that would make sense. So if you're, if you have money and you're helping a seller or you were trying to acquire their real estate, right? And all they needed was to have the arrears brought up and they're a great candidate. Maybe they had COVID for a while and their life just turned around. And now they need to get back on their feet. This is a rare situation, but it's happened. Um, I don't practice this on every property because usually if someone's losing their, um, their house, uh, there's a bigger reason uh, that you don't want to deal with. But if you have a decent reason uh, in your heart of hearts and you know it's a good one and you can help and serve them, um, I would definitely do it. And I have. Uh, you could bring up the arrears and um, you would be a second. You could be a money lender, you could be a second on the property. Um, and then they're paying you interest on that, right? So it's a way to make money and help somebody out. Uh, and here's how that could work in the end as well. If they don't work out, you can still uh, take over the property. Uh, you're already the second on there, so you're going to be the first person that they notify that, hey, it's happening again, I can't pay my bills. And now you can have the whole house, right, and then boot them out of it. So um, <clears throat> there's all kinds of ways to work this, uh, and it just has to make sense for you, the tenant, the house, the market, all of those factors, okay? So that's the first thing you could do what we call the Burr strategy, right? You can acquire the property, uh, buy it, okay? This is the acronym, you could buy it, you could rehab it, rent it, um, refinance it, and then repeat it. That's the five steps in a Burr strategy, okay? So this is the best way to build assets, uh, to have that appreciation uh, go against your income on taxes, right? So that's a whole other tax class strategy uh, that I can get into. Um, the other way is wholesale, right? So let's just say you took something over subject to the existing loan. Uh, here's your terms, you got it in the contract. Um, it's gonna go into your LLC or an LLC you made up that you're gonna sell to another investor, okay? So that's another way of doing it. Uh, you can wholesale it out and then they buy the LLC or the contract out for ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, depending on your market. So um, I paid a wholesaler here $1,500. So that's Pennsylvania. It was a house for $18,000. So there wasn't much to, you know, uh, give the wholesaler, but I gave him something. And, um, you know, even still, that was fine by me. I got the property for $18,000 plus the $1,500 uh, wholesale fee. And uh, it's, that's my market in Northeast Pennsylvania, right? I could pick them up like six packs compared to what I did in California. Now in California, uh, 10, $20,000 uh, wholesale fee, right? But this is not the way to build wealth, but it's a way, like if you're not ready to hold and you just want some fast cash, so every property you come in contact with, uh, you're gonna hold your deck of cards and you're gonna go, hmm, wholesale? Victims of buy and hold, <clears throat> money lend. Those are my strategies that I get to, <coughs> excuse me, my exit strategies that I get to choose. And so in doing that, uh, that's, um, again, you always have to have an exit strategy in the beginning, not the end. You have to know how it's going to end or approximately how it's going to end. Uh, the acquisitions are totally separate, so don't get those confused, okay? Um, so as a wholesale, if you're not ready to hold, like you just want to make some fast cash, and even those that um, you're like, hey, I thought I was going to buy and hold it, uh, and now I think I'm just going to sell it off to another investor. So always having a buyer's list, even if you're looking to just build your own portfolio, don't let it go to the wayside. Build relationships with other investors and go, hey, Bobby, Sue, and um, Ken, and so-and-so, and so-and-so, -and -so, I have this property, who wants it? Are you interested, right? And then get, you know, 10000 20000 for it. Uh, so, again, depending on the house, the market, and everything else going on. Um, so, I mean, just get a fee for it. And so you're still making some cash, some fast cash. Uh, you could tie it up with a wholesale. You can tie it up and sell it to a flipper or a landlord uh, for two or if you're just wholesaling, right? 
anywhere from two to thirty thousand dollars, depending on the market. Um, so I did have an investor friend of mine make a hundred, over a hundred thousand in a wholesale transaction. But this was in Burlingame, California, where it's you know multi million dollars out there. Um, so a hundred grand was nothing. So it's all subject to the environment and everything. Uh, the third thing is to flip it, right? Uh, if you want to flip it, according to the terms, so let's just say you took it over subject to, um, so that you would have to know the rate and term what's going on with the loan, you would have to know the payments, the mortgagee or uh, mortgagor that is, uh, um, this is paid out to, and you can get a third party um, servicer to, to work that for you. But you need to know the rehab costs. Um, and according to all of this, you can make a combo of it, right? So, so what if you got a hold of a property subject to, um, and you put your own funds in for rehab, right? That's okay. Um, but you're not paying that whole, like maybe it's a $200,000 property and the loan is 170 or 180, right? So there's not much room in there but you're not having to pay that plus rehab, right? So you're just making payments on those. So um, so there's that. And then there is, you could use all private. You can have an all a private money lender on all of it. So it's a way to really, um, I mean, if you're gonna flip it, you can hold on to it for like, you know, four to six months, depending on how the rehab is. Um, it's typical four to six months. Um, if you're if you have a team and you're slamming out like 30 a month you know like that's a lot but you know typically they do like five to ten right um in a month and uh then the, of course that holding cost is different for you you wouldn't probably be on this call if you're doing 10 rehabs a month uh but anyways uh so there's a way to flip it and create that combination of funds okay so and if he, even if you were wholesaling it, like one of my students did a wholesale, uh, got it in a contract, and then was able to uh, take it over subject to the existing loan. The seller just wanted the headache uh, gone, just be gone. And then he joint ventured with a fix and flipper, right? And so he learned how to do fix and flip through that fashion. It was a joint venture and they split the profits. So there's all kinds of ways to work this. And I just love the magic of it all. Um, it brings out the mad scientist in me, and it's something I wanted to be when I was a kid. If you guys know what you wanted to be when you was a kid, type it in the comments. Really? I mean, did you ever say real estate investor? I wanted to be a mad scientist, and I wanted to travel across the country. And I tell you, I get to do that now. I have traveled all over the country. I have students all over the country. I have a, a business reason to travel across the country. And... I get to be a mad scientist with all these different ways, all these concoctions, if you will, on doing real estate investing. So, I don't know. I'm. I feel I am living my dream. What did you guys want to be when you wanted, when you were a young kid, a firefighter, a nurse, or, you know, let me know in the chat what that is. Uh, that'd be fun to learn. So, so why, why real estate? So real estate is super important. Uh, I can't stress this enough. I'm on my soapbox almost every single day saying you need to be an entrepreneur and have real estate assets because I read tax law and that is the secret sauce to paying next to zero in taxes, period. Now, so if you're already an entrepreneur, you have a business that's running full time, uh, has nothing to do with real estate, that's great. That's being an entrepreneur, uh, small business, coach, uh, professional, small business professional. Um, realtors, mortgage brokers, whoever you are, right? <clears throat> you can also have a business as being a full-time real estate investor. <clears throat> That's right. So not only is real estate investing an asset, complementary is the actual business of it, right? You could be a full-time investor. So that's being an entrepreneur and having real estate assets. So you could be in here full-time like I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for 20 years, so I get a little funny sometimes. <clears throat> anyway, so so I'm in it for the tax benefits. Uh, I heard that the government takes, you know, 40%, half your check, basically, uh, to uh, 
be a W-2 employee. And I said, forget that. I'm never doing that. I'm not doing that. <clears throat> so for me, it's about paying zero in taxes or, you know, as close as I can to it. I'm not always on the money, but I'm close to it. Um, so how many of you want to pay less in taxes? I mean, really, just say me. I want to pay zero taxes, right? Uh, and learn that long-term depreciation secret. Right? That's really where it's at. So there's been so many entrepreneurs popping up in the world uh, since the pandemic and everyone's working from home. And, uh, and they're going to get whacked in taxes, just whacked in taxes uh, from any. I mean, if you, there's coaches that I know that have blown up six and even close to seven figures in the past year. Um, just from being online coaching and they're just gonna get whacked in taxes so I'm here to help you guys save on taxes by investing in real estate and I'll show you how so if you want to know just type uh, creative in the comments and I will show you how uh, I'll be doing a master class on this so <clears throat> if you want those deets type creative in the comments um, so typically uh, I like to go over what you would need to retire. This is all about the Retire Early Through Real Estate Investing Facebook group. And um, how many of these deals would you need to either A, quit your job, or fund the life um, to follow your passions, right? To be that full-time entrepreneur that's not living client to client. You have the cash flow from the assets backing you up. You get to be the traveler that you want and have that time freedom to spend with your family. Like, that is priceless. It's priceless for me, and as, which is why I will not be a W-2. I mean, I'll fight tooth and nail for some reason. Something happens, right? But uh, <clears throat> I'll fight tooth and nail to be that, to stay that way. Let me check here. Okay, cool. And then uh, basically, if you don't know how to understand, if, if you don't know how to understand, if you don't understand how to close a creative deal, let me know. Like, uh, if you, if you don't know how to get on the phone and say to the seller, um, this is what I want, you know, like, let's do this creatively. And they're looking at you like you got three heads. Um, if you want to know how this works for you, uh, you could bring the deal to me. I can walk through the deal with you. Um, I can close it for you. Now, I can't train you on it because I save that for my clients. But I can close it for you, right? Uh, but if you want to learn how to do this yourself, again, I'll be doing a master class coming up. So uh, type creative in the comments and I'll get you the details uh, on that. Um, and I'll have more time. I'll get into all the details of how it works um, on that master class. So you'll learn more there. So again, type creative in the comments. If you want the details, we'll reach out and my team will make sure that you have all the details. But with these strategies, you can acquire the burst strategy. Um, uh, in the burst strategy, your money's being made by the tenant, right? And they're paying down the note. They're helping you build wealth with your asset. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, with the appreciation, uh, but don't bank on it, right? Don't, we don't buy because we know it'll appreciate. We buy because the numbers work today, and when appreciation happens, uh, that is just like gravy, it's bonus, right? So uh, if you know anything about our money matrix system, our economy that's happening right now, you'll know that it is uh, inflated. You'll know that it is uh, being, I mean, they're printing so much money uh, that they're devaluing the dollar. So to get a hold of something that is valuable, I can't stress to you how important it is to get to acquire and hold real estate. Hold, I've made more money in the past two years than, uh, I mean, through the pandemic, right? I'll be showing in this masterclass um, how I made my money and paying next to zero in taxes. So like, I mean, and I acquired them all creatively. So uh, anyways, I'll get into it in the masterclass, um, but it's the fastest way to build wealth. and. Uh, it is super important um, when something is sink like think about the Titanic right uh, if you think about the Titanic when they were sinking they got on something that floated right 
They got on something that floated to save their lives. I'm telling you, real estate is floating and you want to get on it because if you had a dollar in a glass and I'm, you know, you put it in a jar and you buried it in the backyard 10 years from now and it is not going to be worth what it, it will have done nothing. It's just a piece of paper, right? But real estate will have floated up with the economy right now again real estate has its dips don't get me wrong i know i was in the biggest dip 2008 lost everything and um you know it's but look where it's at today it because it, on the average it's a consistent up climb where, where do you think real estate was even just two years ago right five years ago or the house you bought uh, i did a little um facebook post and I wish somebody would have told me a long time ago, right? Like when I was younger and uh, to do real estate because they'd be multimillionaires by now if they had held on to that real estate. And I'm telling you, you can still do it. I don't care how old you are. You can still do it. Um, or how young you are, really. You need no credibility whatsoever. It doesn't matter your sex, age, color, uh, debt to income ratio, any of those things. It does not matter. Um, so people think that they need to do wholesale first in order to get into real estate investing. And it's just simply not true. Um, you don't have to, you can do it to earn some cash, but again, you could do any of the four exit strategies. Okay. Um, and the best way is to, uh, uh buy and hold. Okay. And everyone thinks, oh, I can't do that because I have no credit. I have no cash. And my debt to income ratio, the bank said no, and I don't know, I have to save up. There's tons of ways to get real estate. So um, jump in and get it done. Again, type creative in the comments if you wanna learn more on how to do that. Um, so the big question was why I borrow from private money lenders and don't use my own, own money, right? Um, once you learn how to make the money work for you, you'll be doing the same. I guarantee. Uh, so for those of you that have money, um, you should be a private money lender and I can help you understand how that works. Uh, I have a separate training on that. Uh, but to be a private money lender, that means your money's working for you on a property. Um, I've had investors come to me and say they put all their cash, like they made a whole bunch of money, they saved up and then they put it all into an investment property and now they don't have any money for a rehab. Like they really didn't dial out how it should work. Uh, and it happens time and time again. I get called all the time about how they need a loan for rehab costs. And this is how I get a hold of properties, right? Um, so you shouldn't put all your cash into a property. You should leverage it out somehow, somehow, some way, either um, through the bank, if you wanna do a traditional loan, um, you're putting just a little bit down and then the tenants paying down the rest. Never pay all cash, put all your cash, because it's in jail and it's going, let me out, let me out. Uh, and it's uh, not working, it's dormant. You want your money working for you. So this is what the savvy investors do is they, they invest on each other's properties. Um, they do this because um, they know that they're gonna make more money this way than if they're just leaving it in there. Like they'll make it faster, right? Um, otherwise you're banking on appreciation. You should never bank on appreciation to get your principal back. You can thank appreciation for all the profits, right? Because it grew. However, don't bank on it to get your principal back. Your principal shouldn't be in there. Okay, because it's not working. It's just not working. And if you guys don't understand that, um, I'm happy to get clarification to you, but just type in the comments and let me know and I can, and I can clarify it for you. Um, so passive income and wealth in real estate assets, you need to be doing this. You need, 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 need to be doing this. You will lose the money game. Uh, the, the, it's rigged against you, right? The government has, uh, and I, I don't want to bring politics into this, but it has been rigged against you. you. It's Our system is not made to win. The government has made that clear. 
And just when you thought you were winning, here's a pandemic and let's shut everything down and make sure nobody's winning. And then let's shut everything down again and cripple everyone uh, in their economics so that they depend on the government. Oh, let's give you a stimulus check. Rely on us. Which they are the last people. I mean, if, if you, let's just say, if you wanted to be a money lender and you wanted to lend money to somebody and they were in debt trillions of dollars, would you think you're gonna get your money back? Well, that's what's happened to the government. And, uh, and it, they, other countries are not believing in us anymore because uh, we owe a ton of money. And uh, they're, they're not really um, handling their money very well. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to handle your own you have to create your own economic independence which is why I'm doing this today so typically um, uh, you could write off the depreciation to keep more of the money you make right um, this whole system is rigged against you so please listen please listen the government takes 30 to 40 percent out of your tax uh, if you're w-2 they take that from you if you're self-employed they're taking all kinds of self-employment taxes from you so real estate assets and the way you're structured are the biggest deals uh, about how to keep more of the money you make. And um, again, I'm gonna go over all of this in my master class that's coming up. So type uh, creative in there if you wanna know how to keep more of the money you make and do creative deals. Um, but uh, the depreciation basically wipes off your gains, right? Like. So it's like this, right? So if you're a W-2, um, you're making money and you're paying way more in taxes. And if you're an entrepreneur, it's just about the same, a little bit different. And then if you're structured differently and you have assets, you get the income and you're paying less in taxes. You may even be getting some back, right? Or carry forward, carry back. And uh, anyway, so I don't wanna get too far into taxes, but, um, uh, through this process, you're also helping sellers solve a problem. So you're not just about taxes, you're not just about requiring, acquiring wealth, but you also get to help sellers with a problem. There are so many people out there with a problem. Billions of people with a problem. What are you gonna do, right? So learn these strategies so that you know how to help them and uh, so a lot of sellers have referred to me, um, other sellers, they're like, you know, Joanna helped me through this situation. I bet you she can help you too. Because uh, I make it a win-win for everybody. I don't judge anyone because they're in a bad situation. We all get in them. Nobody's perfect. We're all human, which means we're not p perfect, right? Thank you, Adam and Eve, for that. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, so shit happens and uh, I was just learning of another uh, uh, person who was losing her home and um, uh, it, it's just, just devastating like there's no real reason she should right there's no real reason but life got in the way life happens have you ever tried to do something and um, like the car broke down or that this happened or I mean like all these things just started domino affecting why you couldn't move forward on the thing that you wanted well this is what's happened to her she's starting to lose her home and uh, it's a matter of making the situation work not just for her but for me as well right um so i get referrals for for helping out sellers um that may be facing bankruptcy uh foreclosure uh maybe they need to relocate Maybe there's been a death in the family. You know, we've all heard about a lot of different deaths going on, uh, this whole pandemic COVID thing. And then people downsizing, right? Like, if, they, if they're not motivated and they have all the time in the world, they'll probably just list it with a realtor. And if they have equity, that's great. That's awesome. Go for it. But those that have a problem, super, super, super duper need your help as investors. So this is why I'm giving you these uh, tidbits uh, on how to do creative real estate investing. Um, again, so many reasons why sellers need your help. Um, 
And if you can't seem to understand the importance I'm laying down right now, um, just join the masterclass and you'll see how it's done. You'll see the, the creative deal and how I structure. Um, and if you're like, I just need you to close this for me. I don't want to learn. I just want to pass it off to you. Send me the deal. I'll close it. Uh, and I'll pay you for it. You know, like not a big deal. That's part of creative real estate investing is making sure everything's paid for through real estate. Everything is paid for. My whole entire life has been paid for by real estate. So for the last over 21 years now. Okay. So if I could do it, you guys can do it because I did not come from a real estate background. I did not come from riches. I was dirt broke and uh, I started from nothing. So again, if I could do it, you guys can do it. My parents didn't know squat about real estate. They rented my whole entire life. So I didn't know anything about real estate or keeping more of the money you make. They were just work hard, get a good job, uh, go to school, work hard, get a good job, right? Uh, and then go to school for to get a better job like and then you're just a slave your whole entire year paying taxes to the government and working for somebody else's dreams not my jam so <laughs> that's why i do what i do so again if you want help learning uh, how to do all this type creative in the comments and my team or i will reach out to you and give you the deets to the master class where i will deep dive into this for you i hope this has been uh helpful for you guys and um, type value in the comments if you got some value uh, if nothing else, and then uh, I'll see you guys on next week's training or in the DMs to get you the deets. All right, so I hope you're having a beautiful week, and I will talk to you guys. Oops, let me get over here. I will talk to you guys uh, on the next training. Bye.